this guy is here on the way. This is one we're going to rescue. If I can get a good shot of it, which I kind of can't. So yesterday was breaking down over 19 computers that were given to me as recycles. This is the last little bit from yesterday that I had thrown all over the place, so this has to get processed. Over there is some of the power supplies. And behind it is a bin filled with even more that I filled up. But enough of that. So this got me thinking. I still have some printers up in the attic that need a good rescue. God knows what the temperature is out there. Because over here, it's currently 95 degrees. And that's pretty cool compared to yesterday. So I'm making you all sick here with the motion. But I went up there this morning, and this is another image writer. And uh, I found something interesting on this. In a minute when we go up, we'll see what the temperature is up there, and that's why this will be interesting. This image writer, when I opened it up, I was just talking or replying to a tweet from Sutek, who was cleaning up an image writer he just picked up. And he discovered, what a lot of these do, is this foam here disintegrates on you. Just like the foam that's on the roller here in the color ribbons will disintegrate and all your ribbon binds up. I know this personally all too well. So, this is why I found this one interesting. Take a look. It's still squishy. And it's a shame you can't feel this over video. But you can see it's doesn't feel gooey, doesn't feel sticky, has a good, I don't know what you'd call it, kind of feels like a uh, vinyl, new vinyl texture on it. But this is a first. So, a theory here on it is this printer has lived its whole life out here in the southwest, in the New Mexico desert. I know who owned this from the time they bought it in the 80s. And I've noticed some of the other equipment I've gotten that spent time in the Midwest or back east, the plastics are very brittle, but when I have the same exact items here in the southwest that have only lived in the southwest, knock on wood, the plastics don't seem quite as brittle. So the classic, it's a dry heat out here. I'm wondering how much of that has to play with the uh, longevity of the plastic. So I'm not going to pretend to be some scientist or whatever that knows all this. I'm sure someone will explain it if it even has any merit or not. Or I'm just talking BS here. So anyways, there's a couple more up here in that attic. So let's go up and see what our temperature is. Here's the current temperature. That's not as bad as I thought. I was expecting over 150. So let me take you down to all the way to the other end where uh, the attic collection was stored. Way down there. So, didn't go back as far as I wanted. This guy is here on the way. This is one we're going to rescue. If I can get a good shot of it, which I kind of can't. I'm having to stand on the trusses because there's no flooring back here, as you can see. So, this Epson. Let's see if I can get a little closer to it. There you go. So this is another printer by that Epson, a Commodore 64 printer. I think I know which one it is, but it's 145 degrees up here, so I'm not about to open this one up up here. We'll take it down along with 
our Epson and uh, see what we got down there. So I will be back. So here we are back down 95 degrees, 50 degrees cooler than what it was. Uh, it makes a world of difference. So there is the Epson. Here's an ironic part. See that there? Back around 2004, we had a big, huge garage sale. And I sold a lot of my old computer stuff. And that's what this one was. This was actually marked down, I think I started at probably about $25. And even at $10, no one wanted it. Which is a good thing. Because I'd pay a lot more to get it back now. But it's dirty. The foam, again, this foam, you can see, it's probably not 100%, but it still feels about 95% as good as it should. Dirty, yes. Very dirty. Well, you can see some lots of cleaning needs to be done, but you can see the original color coming through there. Things seem to be working still. So, pretty happy there. I have confidence the unit will fire up and work. So, let me move this one out of the way. And that way we can dive into the... Uh, one that was labeled Bubble Bliss. Oh, no, the Commodore 64 printer. And you can see when I went to go grab it up there, yeah, the handle broke. So, all right, let's see what we have. This box will probably break apart. Panasonic KX P1080. And I don't want anyone to break. Oh, again, more foamy. That's uh, not looking bad at all. Needs a quite the thorough cleaning. Man. Be curious to see if this guy will even power on. So throwing caution to the wind here. Let me plug this in. Perfect. That is a good sign. Just got to be able to put it back together correctly. Everyone seems to be working. So, this I think we can write off as so far functional. Get a good clean up and test it out at a later date here. So I think that'll about do it. Three more printers rescued from my attic collection that's been sitting up there for at least 20 years. And these guys sure do appreciate being down here where it's only 99 degrees right now. So, get these cleaned up, put them into service somehow, some way. One last thing, because I'm sure there'll be a few that ask, what about the Epson? Does it power on? And I figured I better show that real fast before we totally end this. So let's take a look. And it powers on. 
So I think we're pretty good. It is waiting for paper, wanting to do its job. Oh, but wait, you tested the Panasonic, you tested the Epson, what about the image writer? We haven't tried that one, so let's take a look. So there you have it, three working printers from the attic. So I thank you for watching and sticking with me on this. I am standing here going back and forth over these, pouring sweat in a 99 degree garage that feels like it's actually quite cool compared to being up there in the hell that these guys were sitting in for 20 plus years. So till next time, thank you for watching. Have a great one.